Previously on Into the Motherlands. Hello, Motherlands family, and welcome to Back to the Motherlands, presented by Dicey Amazons. A quick recap show discussing the development and events of Into the Motherlands campaign featuring Tanya the Pass, Christina Ariel, Michael Sinclair II, DJ Knight, Abria Iyengar, and storyteller Eugenio Vargas. I'm Candy, executive producer of Dicey Amazons and one of your hosts. And I'm your other host, Pi, head producer of Dicey Amazons. So let's jump right into the season three premiere, mostly with what happened at the end of season two. So season two ends in a cliffhanger. Everyone's holding their heart and their pearls collectively. But I want to go back to something that that I lie said that really shook me to my core. As you can tell, I was wearing my ring thinking that it was going to be me and I lie forever and ever. Amen. Turns out, no, I has got a partner, two partners, actually. So I mean, maybe you could be number three if there's not already a number three. I don't have the emotional capacity to do that. So you know what? It's cool. I'll talk about it in therapy. That's cool. I'm very happy for Eli and their partners, and I wish them the best of luck. <laughs> I think. Uh, but yeah, so. I was gonna say real quick. I think uh, just the shock on everybody's face uh, when I lie, <laughs> like everybody except for you, of Every- course. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Michael. And everyone else was like, oh. yes. <laughs> "What?" Right. I was I was watching their premiere after the after it was live, and uh, yeah, I almost dropped like a whole fork full of lunch. It was ridiculous. So, yeah, broken hearts across mm-hmm. the internet. Uh, Michael Sinclair the second, but we're happy for you and Isla. Whatever, it's okay. I don't care. For sure. <laughs> I'm happy for Isla. <laughs> So, at the cliffhanger, this cliffhanger had my heart, my blood pressure, you know, like, as a Black person, I cannot handle this type, this type of high intense situations, which was, spoiler alert, the entire season three premiere, right? So, uh, the cliffhanger, uh, so we find out from Major Rafia that uh, she has lost contact with Bertrand, and... That's kind of where uh, Eugenio, mastermind Eugenio, uh, left us off here. Um, and I, I I wanted to hit like the fast forward button because I was watching it afterwards. So I just wanted to get to what happened, you know? So yeah, Ken, do you want to get into what happened at the beginning of season three? Uh, sure. Um, so we open with the crew who's per- who's currently in the water um, with this big machine, this mysterious machine. Um, and it, they're actually being pushed away from the machine uh, by, by the waves. So they're actually being pushed towards the beach. Um, but as they, as they do, as this is happening, a, a big beam of light has basically come from this machine and gone into the mm-hmm. air. And so this is where that, that cliffhanger ends up meeting into this, uh, this premiere episode is because we come in right after that beam and finding out, you know, that they've lost contract, contact with Bertrand. So we find out from Major Rafia that it seems that this mysterious weapon has actually, uh, has probably hit the Wistful Wish. And so this is what probably has made them lose contact with the ship. Um, and... Subsequently, a distress beacon has been activated at this point. Yeah, so everyone's hearts uh, are in their throats at this moment, wondering what has happened to our beloved Bertrand. And I I wish that I was a player right now because I would haven't been gone already. I would have been gone. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Eugenio would have been on everybody's list. If something had like, like everybody's thinking, you idiot, don't you dare! Mm-hmm. 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 You can't don't bring Bertrand you to our lives like this. Yes, and then rip him away. It's it's unfair, and once again, mm-hmm. my blood pressure. Mr. Yeah, Eugenio. yeah. And then we Please had to wait like for a month, almost a uh, whole month. Uh, yeah, a whole month uh, before finding out what happened. You know, during this episode. In these so. trying times, an entire <laughs> month to wait. I can't believe it. But we made it. We made it. Uh, mm-hmm. So the the distress beacon, the distress beacon uh, has been picked up by the crew. 
they're all basically heading out there. Eli has told their partners about, you know, we're going to head out to this area. Sound the alarm. Bring everyone. Uh, and so on the way there, uh, there is this interesting, this interesting conversation uh, as, uh, as Kose realizes Kosa. that... Kosa, sorry. Kosa realizes that uh, part of her droid, uh, Tiwi, uh, is most likely down there in the wreckage and wants to divert for a brief a brief moment to try and get Tiwi so that they can use Tiwi to try and find Bertrand. And then Bertrand, not Bertrand, uh, and Victa's like, yeah, but you can make more Tiwi. And hashtag droid lives matter. <laughs> that part Victa, was so tense. Out. That part was so tense. I was just like, what? <laughs> Ooh. In these in these trying times, Invicta, how could you? You know. <clears throat> and then um, when Silent Nine One Nine spoke up, it uh, just even more tense. I was just like, "What?" So mm-hmm. Silent Nine One Nine jumps in and is like, "Hey, like, th- th- I'm basically a droid. Like, would you do the same I, thing I for me? Droid lives matter. Would you yeah. just come back for me, thinking you can put me back together?" And Man, I was whew, I, I was tearing up at that point because I was just like, oh. <laughs> I wasn't ready to put was, my stomping boots on. It you know, feels. like <laughs> we have to stand up for. You know, we have to stand up for uh for for Tiwi. Yeah. And Sila, Admiral. Admiral Sila, Sila nine one nine. Put some respect on it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but Invicta does uh, give in. And so they were actually able to to uh, to land with the main wreckage of the ship, uh, knowing that Bertrand was a probably a little bit further um, in the escape pod. Uh, but they do land, um, and we get to meet Maria and um, Decker. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I lies uh, base. We get to we get mm-hmm. to meet the base. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. cool. Uh, real jealous. quick, <laughs> but I, I do like um, just from that little bit that we saw. I do like like it was their, really sweet. It was really sweet. It was really sweet. It was really sweet. It was a really sweet interaction. Yeah, I'm very happy for them. <laughs> uh, but Kosa was actually able to uh, find the top half of Tiwi, mm-hmm. um, and able to uh, look at the cameras from the Wistful Wish, to Wish uh, before it went down, and so was able to find oh. out that. Uh, Bertrand actually did it was at least on his way to <laughs> the escape mm-hmm. pod um, and, and the escape pod it. had been ejected so yeah, uh, yeah. he know. was hoofing it and once again I don't know what it is and maybe you can tell me Candy as a GM what is with you wrenching my heart and my feelings and my emotions with all these cliffhangers okay <laughs> um, I, yeah. I I have questions personally I, I love cliffhangers. Like, in TV shows, like, I hate... It's, like, one of the things that you love to hate. <laughs> mm-hmm. And no, so, I... I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not... They're not as bad now, uh, especially now that you can... Um, you can, like, binge watch and stream everything. It's not as mm-hmm. bad. But, like, some, the few shows that I do watch weekly... Like, you, you know, you get that cliffhanger and you're Between, like, oh, I yeah. just want to keep going. <laughs> but yeah. I gotta wait. Between you and your video, like, I have to wait. Like, it's 1994. And I, I don't know what to do with myself anymore. You know? Maybe but it, no. it it brings that that sort of anticipation for the next game, right? Like if we it it, if we end on something boring, it's just like okay, you know. And then most of the time, players aren't really thinking about the game. But mm. if you if you end on that cliffhanger, like for that next week or however long it is to the next game, players are thinking about <laughs> that game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot easier to tap back into those same emotions yeah. uh, when you left off literally at the edge of the cliff. Exactly. Of the cliff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, this is the part, uh, I think, where we get introduced into a new character uh, with Invicta's cousin Invictus. Interesting dynamic there. I really love uh, seeing the two of them talk, and I really want the two of them to continue to interact. I want to see what's going to happen after like in episode two. Uh, so basically everyone's heading down uh, and deeper, further into the wreckage uh, to try and recover Bertrand because we got to save our boy. You know, he's down there sad. 
and we cannot have this anymore. <laughs> so in what I feel like is, I don't know, one of the most like intense moments, uh, everyone's looking to Akemba. Uh, uh, okay, so like they find, they find Bertrand, right? They find the, the heartbeat or the life, the life signal of Bertrand. They get down there, Bertrand is beat up, banged up, and this little trumpet, he can't even do the full thing that he used to do. Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to Akimba. Now, if anyone remembers, Akimba uh, doesn't make the best rolls, you know? You know? <laughs> uh, so I was, I was nervous, mostly for Bertrand, and uh, I I was I was holding my breath literally when uh, DJ hit the button and kind of put his hands up and then walked away. And while while Eugenio was going on with like how the score was playing out, I I just wanted to see what the score was. And yeah. I don't I don't think we saw it, but they said they said what it was and that it, it had be oh. yeah uh, okay yeah so I well actually okay. I'm trying to think that might have been earlier, but yeah. <laughs> Either okay. we saw it, but it, it was it was a beat, and so we were like, yes. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if that's part of, like, because DJ, like, as a player, I'm wondering if, like, when people, like, when he was thinking about that, he thinks, okay, I know I rolled terribly. And so I'm going to play this, like, with the Kimba. You can hear it in like, his voice. I know, like, with the Kimba, like, I don't know if I should do this. Maybe you should go get your cousin. Like, I don't know. I'm wondering if that had, like, anything to do with, like, him, like, being very hesitant at first. <laughs> but oh. I knew, and I knew the crew was going to be like, look, you need to, you need to get it together. <laughs> Pull it together, <laughs> and, uh, and, and they they did, of course, and yeah. you know. And, and can we also take a beat to like like praise Eugenio on the way that he described like the 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 I don't know emergency medic combat treatment yeah. that Akimba gave to Bertrand, and and the in the moment that Bertrand needed it the most. Yeah, uh, it was beautiful. It reminded me of something I don't know, rivaling the Matrix when I first saw it. You know, just like imagining <laughs> like all of this code being mended and paired, and you know, yeah, yeah pretty great. Yeah, Unio does have some of the best descriptions uh, that I've heard, and so I, I think it works really yes. well uh, with this campaign. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, we basically leave this uh, a little bit on another cliffhanger, but we know that Bertrand is okay-ish. Yes, yes. uh, not down to one HP anymore. You know, Bertrand is he's on his way on the mend. You know, <laughs> we're, we're getting him out of the wreckage. He's gonna, we're gonna have a parade. There's gonna be a butt ton of salad. It's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, so uh, this has been great. This has been lovely to recap episode one, the season three premiere of Into the Motherlands. Thanks everyone for tuning in to Back to the Mother's Lands and stay tuned for episode two coming up right after this and every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash Cypher of Tear at 4 p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Central Time. All right, and if you want to check out more content from Dicey Amazons, check us out on twitch.tv slash Dicey Amazons. Thank you. Enjoy the Bye. show. <laughs> <laughs>
centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could imagine. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants have made a home for themselves on a new planet, and the calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Akemba, the Musalian Bio-Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misagai Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio-Priest. Abria Iyengar as Koza, the Hyenol Fixer, and Ahenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the motherlands. I was really excited. Oh, all right, sure. Uh, hi, my name is Eugenio. I, you might know me as DM Jazzy Hands. I will be your storyteller this evening. Welcome back. We're so happy to have you for episode two of season three of Into the Motherlands. I am joined by five phenomenal role players. And before we do anything else, we should have them introduce themselves, tell you all the awesome things uh, that they plan for tonight. I want your whole plan for everything your character is going to do. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. No, I just want to know who you are and who you're playing tonight. Um, go, chaos season. You all decide who introduces. Oh, hi, it me, DJ. Yes. I play a Kemba Musalian bio priest. He and my pronouns are he, him. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Chaos engaged. Let's go. Thanks. Love it. Hi, I'm Abrea Iyengar playing Koza. You're a high and old fixer. Both of our pronouns are she, her, and all of my plans uh, involve surreptitiously beginning the process of tracking all of my friends so I don't lose them again. <laughs> we did know that. That's excellent. Oh, come on, y'all. It was so good. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Critz everywhere. Uh, I play Eli, the Misagi Lightbringer. Their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, the uh, Eli just wants to make sure that Bertrand is okay, but also support Nikimba because they're doing their thing and we're all about that and uh, just here for the squad. So that's my plan. Oh, I'll go next. Hi, yeah. I'm Tanya, Cypher Tear, ever on the internet. Uh, I play Invicta, your high and old blade keeper, uh, but also Invicta went to, in, you know, University of Vitoa. You can get this on Designed by Humans, and the homie DJ has a shirt as well. Go to DJ Space Camp uh, for Camp DBH. You can get those now on uh, Designed by Humans, and I guess this week I'll be nice. I don't know who knows, but uh, Invicta <laughs> and I are she, her. I love it. Who knows? Let's see what mood it takes me. Who's to say? Who's to say? Last but not Who least. Who could say? Wait, did Michael Sinclair II go? Yes, yes. Michael Sinclair II went before Tanya to see to pass. Are you sure? Oh, oh anyway. Name? <laughs> yeah, well, this is for Cypher to get to pass. Everyone knows that. <laughs> what? Okay, uh, Eugenio A. Vargas. Ooh. Ooh, I felt oh, it damn. in my soul. Christina, like introduce that. yourself before I burst into flames. Hello, my name is Christina Ariel, she, her, and I play Admiral Sila 919, also she, her, and she is a Monsagene bio-priest. She is an android who is learning full emotional sentience, and it is a process, so that will probably play into how she reacts to finding Bertrand, who she is still low-key sad because Bertrand is hurt, and processing hurt is really hard, and um, yeah, it's a... It's an emotional cluster that Hineo sent us on last week. And I think that's the only logical way to refer to it because I was emotionally bereft. Anyway, let's have fun. We're here to have a good time and also deal with the near death of our friend Bertrand. 
Uh, I am remiss, I did not mention that I use he, him pronouns. I appreciate all of you remembering where I did not. Um, so things to do before we start playing. Lots of thanks to go out, as you all may or may not remember. Uh, we have several groups that we want to thank for helping us be here tonight. First up, we want to thank Die Hard Dice uh, for supporting our endeavors into the motherlands. As most of you probably know by now, they have a beautiful uh, sky blue Musalian skies dice set just for us uh, and lots of other fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous dice on their site. You can go to dieharddice.com to check out their whole inventory. And when you place your order, be sure to use code Motherlands RPG at checkout for 10% off your whole order. That's Motherlands RPG. So go check out their dice. Uh, of course, blue microphones we have to thank. You can sort of see a little bit of my microphone here. Uh, they have uh, supplied us with equipment so that we sound good for you all each week and we very much appreciate them. You can check out their stock of all the cool stuff that they're doing uh, at their website, bluemic.com, including they just announced a partnership with Logitech uh, for this really cool looking headset microphone setup thing going on. So go check that out. Uh, next up, we want to thank Cortex. Obviously, our stream here is powered by Cortex, and we're very grateful to the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. <clears throat> You can check them out on Twitter. You can check out Fandom on Twitter at Fandom Tabletop, or if you want specifically Cortex news, you can go to at Cortex RPG. They've got all kinds of exciting, fun news out about uh, uh, the Tales of Zadia, the official Dragon Prince RPG that Cortex is working on, the upcoming uh, uh, Legends of Grayskull Masters of the Universe RPG that they're working on, and all kinds of other weekly updates to the system and those games and stream shows and all of that. So check them out at Fandom Tabletop at Corpe Cortex RPG. And finally, we of course want to thank Twitch very, very much. Into the Motherlands premieres exclusively here on Twitch every week, and we are so grateful that they have uh, trusted us with three whole seasons here with you all. We are very, very grateful. So thanks to the folks at Twitch for uh, for believing in us and for putting us back here. Twenty what? What episode are we on? Twenty three now, I think. Uh, so thanks for that, 24, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is all of those announcements. We do have one other fun announcement for you all. Uh, we wanted to let you all know, in case you haven't seen uh, the Twitters today, uh, that we are available, Into the Motherlands is available to be nominated for Top TTRPG Campaign of the Year as part of the Game Heroes Awards. Um, so well, let's see here. I have a little tweet. We'll toss it in the chat. There you go. If you're here live, uh, information on how you can, how you can put us up for the top TTRPG campaign of the year. We'd be very, very appreciative of that. Uh, the gamers switched up, in fact, the name of that category, as I understand it, from top D&D &D campaign specifically to top TTRPG campaign more generally, uh, so that lots of other shows can enter, including us. So that's a fun, new, exciting development. Go check that out. We would very much appreciate it. All right. I think that's all of our non-story related updates for this week. Uh, I did the recap last week because I wanted to just really pull on every heartstring and emotional cord I could find. Uh, but this week I can toss it back to you all. Does anyone want to tell us what happened last week? You got oh. to live another day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really the long and short of it, isn't it? Eugenio took the coward's way out <laughs> and Bertrand was found alive. Not the first Ooh. person to describe it that way to me. Savagery of it. <laughs> I believe in you. You all, you all know where to just turn your heads next time something awful happens to one of your friends. Bring the pain. <laughs> so the yeah. The wish exploded. The wistful wish did explode. Yeah. You and all Bertrand's saw that happen. Bertrand's in an escape hatch. Bertrand ran to the escape hatch got into the escape pod on the wish as you all later found out. Yeah, well. Semantics. And <laughs> timing semantics. Where was he? I don't know. He just jumped out to the vacuous space. No, what happened was we started right where season two ended uh, with you all washing up on the beach at Mandira, meeting uh, Asalje, Yaktur, and Koza, uh, who, needed, who needed some time. Um, and you all saw the beam, the weird hapalock themed shall we call it weapon fire out of the ocean into the sky uh captain major sorry major rafia gotta get those titles right right we don't want to we don't want to mess up any of those rank you really titles. do yeah we definitely do uh major rafia said that uh, she strangely had lost contact with bertrand and the wish uh you all pieced together that whatever that hapalock weapon was it had probably uh, crossed paths with your beloved ship and your beloved engineer, uh, Hathoray and friend. And indeed that is what happened. Rafia saw that the wish had gone down. You all started making your way over to the wish. 
uh, were able to realize that there was some, uh, there was an escape pod that had gotten out. Uh, I like called, I'm realizing now as I'm doing this recap that we also did a pre-show recap, but I know not all of you were here. So uh, you should though, you should uh, come early in the future, uh, a little bit before 7 p.m. Eastern because uh, Dicey Amazons and Fung Fu Pai are doing little recaps uh, for us, which is very exciting. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going with this one. So you all uh, headed out, Eli contacted Maria and Decker, their partners, uh, and also their entire rescue squad to come out and assist. Uh, it was decided that you all would go first to the main crash site at the Wish because, uh, uh, I almost called you Bria, Koza realized that half of Tiwi uh, had been on the Wish. And so you all wanted to go see if perhaps Tiwi had any more information about where Bertrand may be. Fortunately, Tiwi was able to tell you uh, or show you, I suppose, with video footage and some data from the ship, that Bertrand was going towards the escape pod as the ship exploded, whether or not he made it, Tiwi was unsure. So you raced to the site of the beacon for the escape pod, dug free the escape pod, cut into it, cut through the protective padding with the jaws of life, and there, barely hanging on, was Bertrand alive. Kemba with some clutch healing in the moment after checking in with and getting love and support from his friends. And you were able to stabilize Bertrand enough that you could extract him from the pod and get him to safety. Did I miss anything? <laughs> um, qu clarifying question. By all means. Was it made apparent that uh, we met Eli's partners when the, when the rescue group showed up? And that's I less for Koza, who would not notice that level of like interpersonal connection, and uh -huh. more for Abrea, who just loves relationships. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Isla, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you like were subtle about your greeting with them. I don't think you tried to hide anything. So I think it's on how much each of you was paying attention to Michael, uh, to, damn it, to Isla, uh when, when the rescue team, uh, when you rendezvoused with the rescue team. That's I know for sure. Like ten minutes. I know for sure. In Invicta is very perceptive, so uh, for sure Invicta saw. But as far as everyone else, if they were paying attention to other things, then I am not quite sure. Um, so definitely, I can say for sure Invicta noticed. That makes sense. Uh, yep. So but that's in the open Invicta is for... nosy. I didn't say that. I'm gonna make Why a you starting shit though? That's what I heard. Even started. Let me say something positive. I'm, I, That's I, his word I'm on not the even street. I lie yet. I'm not even I lie yet. It's like, not let me start even the show. Let me say yes. something positive real quick. Oh, all right. All right. I'm gonna remember that. Ooh, we ready today, y'all. We ready. Admiral. We're gonna go. Admiral. We gotta jump. <laughs> I know Admiral's here. I did choose violence during that recap. We got to jump in. <laughs> we got to play this game. You all clearly are bursting with aggressively creative energy. So I guess let's do it. Uh, so we're going to fast forward just a little bit. You all uh, were able to, uh, Kemba, you were able to heal and stabilize Bertrand enough that you all were able to, to lift him, uh, to sort of winch him out of the escape pod and onto the makeshift, onto the makeshift, um, uh, gurney. Um, gurney, not the word I was looking for, but yes, stretcher was actually the word I was looking for, but that works too. Uh, and get him to safety. He obviously was was treated as best he could be by uh, medics from the local emergency team, uh, but he, you know, crash landed in an escape pod from a ship that exploded just out of orbit. So uh, he needed more extensive treatment uh, and is being transferred or actually was transferred already uh, back to Torch HQ where their medical facilities are, uh, you know, second to none, certainly on Vitoa uh, and, and in this sector probably. So he's being treated there. You all have also been uh, transported back to HQ uh, to um, do whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, you know that Major Rafia wants to speak with all of you um, to sort of debrief and, and go through everything that happened, but the major has been very understanding uh, that the last you know 48 hours or so, you know, less than that, because this is still probably evening of the day that you made the rescue. So the last 24 hours have been a lot. So it is evening. You are back at Torch headquarters. Um, you are, you have been provided as before with, with lodging and, uh, everything is sort of taken care of for you. 
And when you're ready, you can reach out to Major Rafia and start that whole process of what's next. But my guess is that not everybody is quite ready for that. So let's check in on you all this evening. And you all tell me, are you together? Are you having time alone? Are you in small groups? Somebody jump in and let me know where you think you might be now that your bags are taken care of, your back at torch and everything has finally, after the furor of the last day, just sort of stopped. Yeah, I, I only kind of know what's happening. Yes, Sila died one died. No, you don't. <coughs> I would like everyone to be together for a moment as okay. I have an announcement to make. I am genuinely afraid. So you all can be together in, in the common area between your, between your uh, rooms. Um, you've all been brought together by Sila919 who has yeah. an announcement. Yeah, if yeah. Sila has said to like be together, then Koza has moved all like the lightest amount, like, basically a bucket's worth of equipment and she's just working on Tiwi in the middle of the floor. Of course, of course. As we've all been through a trying time and she starts to pass a glass of fruit punch to everyone that is standing around her and a little tiny sandwich. And she says, I'd like to make a toast. And she holds up an empty glass. And then she fills it with a little bit of oil, swishes it around. <laughs> I brought you all here to celebrate a special occasion. Cheers. Drink. What's the occasion? Drink. I'd like to know the occasion, please. The paperwork has been submitted. And I believe even if I have done it myself, if we want to be technical about it. My promotion to Vice Admiral oh, is no. official. Oh, God. Cheers. So Cheers. Above and below, left and right and every which way. It's an, <laughs> it's an XP promotion. <laughs> the experience points from our last portion have made it such that I am now Vice Admiral. Thank you all for being okay. here. Okay. I Koza drains the glass and then starts clapping with the sandwich hanging out of her mouth. I hope that you enjoy the sandwich. It's a new recipe. It's very good. Thank you. It's also made especially for you as it does have pimento and red pepper so that if you do need it to be anti-gravity, it does work. And I did cut the edges off. And she kind of just starts to like do a little roll and then like, kind of rolls back away from like where everyone was standing and is yes. back over in her pile of stuff. And she like looks down and checks for like rogue bits of sandwich and then nods and gives you a thumbs up, eats the sandwich and continues to work. Yes. Yes. And she's gonna go over to Invicta and hand her a special PB and J sandwich. Say, hopefully you don't mind that a disposable Android made this. And she's gonna turn and walk off. I throw it back of her head because that wasn't called for. Why did you throw that? Because your comment was uncalled for. It was honest. It was not honest. You are my friend and a person to me. But go ahead and have your moment and I just storm out. You're not supposed to storm. I'll be back. Enjoy. Chips. Oh no, don't come after her. It's not going to end well for you. It is not You're going not to end well. You're not in there well. to say that. Oh no, that's just me telling Christina. <laughs> like you could yeah. try it. No oh, meta oh, gaming. She did what she did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all, y'all can, okay. Y'all planned this shit, didn't you? No, no I don't know what I have. I said my final thing about you all being back at Torch HQ and suddenly I can literally feel the story being ripped from my hands. It's amazing. It's the best feeling. No, 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 it's great. I love it. Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. uh, if, I if know Akimba, I, mm. if, if Akimba is distracted, I'm grabbing the pimento sandwich real quick if he's too distracted by what's going on. Cause Wait, pimento's I the, great. I thought the pimento sandwich was specifically for 
Koza. Uh, I thought, Koza. I thought no, that was. No, the peanut Koza butter and sandwich. jelly was specifically for Invictus. Oh, ah, okay, cool. No, I was talking about Koza sandwich. The, the, the gravity sandwich. I thought it was pimento. Specifically no, you for can her. all help yourselves. I made enough for everyone. My issue is with Invicta, but I still made her favorite sandwich and cut the crust off. I didn't leave the crust on, so it wasn't aggressive sandwiching. Did you cut the crust off of all of them? I'm just curious. I did. It's the thing you do, because nobody yeah. really likes the crust. It's the bones of it. I like the crust. I do, too. <laughs> no, I do. It's, it's a challenging bite. I like the texture. I can understand that. Thank you, Vice Admiral. Eugenia. Thank you. Eugenia. Yes. B Dave's gonna have a fit. <laughs> I'm so glad to know that the last five minutes have been designed specifically to make our lead developer's brain explode. Seems good. Uh, and for the record, Koza, I think the entire like trip back to Torch HQ was kind mm -hmm. of just side-eyeing a Kemba. And she hasn't said anything, but there's definitely like a uh, an evaluation being uh, made. Oh, I love that. And Kim is just snagging on the sandwich and just looks over like, is there something wrong? Why? <clears throat> and she kind of just puts down the front half of TV. Why did you hesitate when? to do your job? You mean to assist Bertrand? Yes. Job or not? Had I just attempted to help Bertrand and failed, that would have weighed on my soul every day for the remaining of, for the remaining time of my being alive. Consider something breaks on TV. And you go to fix it. And it breaks in a way that cannot be fixed again. Yes, I understand that you built Tiwi and that you understand everything about it, but in the off chance that you did a thing to Tiwi that broke it, never allowed it to be created in the same way again, how would you feel? I would feel bad. And that? But what? what? Consider my job here. When we're on the ship, you all trust me to make choices to fix the ship. If I'm wrong, if I hesitate, everyone dies in the vacuum of space. But that's my job. And we're all together because we're the best at what we do. So, you're the best at what you do, and I trust you with my life. Bertrand trusts you with his life. Don't hesitate. Please. But I understand what you're saying, and I'm sorry. I need to apologize. I'm trying to make sure that I don't hesitate when a life is on the line. The only reason I hesitated then because one, it's Bertrand, and two, I'd understood enough about the injuries to know that I could have left him be and the team could have helped him. I would have preferred not to do something to Bertrand needlessly. That could have hurt him. That's all. I understand. Thank you for understanding. I appreciate it. And also, thank you for keeping me on the job, making sure that I'm not sleeping, as it were. I do like to. I do like to make sure that when I use my abilities, it's not randomly, wantonly, for no reason. I think you see in that moment that as you say that, like, those words hit Koza and you see her, like, struggle through her through them like she's trying to like she truly doesn't understand what that means <laughs> like not use your gifts wantonly <laughs> what okay but eventually she kind of just nods and swallows another bite of sandwich and kind of gives you a little smirk and goes back to work and as she goes back to work the camera just remembers she kind of walks away 
uh, taking a bite of the sandwich and just remembers a time where someone else who was a bio priest got a little too comfortable with what they were doing and things did not end well. So he just kind of solemnly walks off. Just She may not understand it now, but hopefully she never does. just making notes because that was a great scene. All right. Uh, so while that, uh, while that little check-in with Koza and Ikemba is going on, thank you both, uh, Invicta has gone to uh, collect herself and, and Silent 919 has gone after her and then got called back to sort out sandwich drama and then uh and now has has head back out and and silent 919 uh by the time you get back out in the hallway uh, i mean you're not far from anybody's uh quarters but uh, invicta is is not to be seen anywhere i was gonna walk down the hall and sit outside of invicta's door and she's gonna amplify her voice but only push it in through the door I know and you're in there. I can literally feel your life force. It's mm -hmm. I apologize for hurting your feelings because I let my own feelings get hurt. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal. And I know that it wasn't your intention. My feelings were hurt. And I'm sorry that I lashed out in the way that I did. I'm still learning to adjust to talking to other people and dealing with their emotions. And I'm very sorry. And I hope that you can forgive me and I will give you a public apology as my mistake was made in public. You don't have to talk to me, but if you do, I have a really nice bourbon. Scotch? Chocolate turtles? You can talk to me when you're ready. And... Silent 919, I think, uh, and obviously, of course, Invicta, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think Invicta uh, hears you but needs time. So do you wait or do you go back or do you go somewhere else? What do you do when you don't get a response immediately? Sila goes to do the only reasonable thing that she can do. Which is? gathering things to make a gift basket. Aha, uh -huh. I can't wait. Yes, excellent. And she's going to be making a card that is a big heart. It says, I'm sorry for Invicta. And she's going to craft it herself. That sounds very sweet. And I can't wait to find out what it looks like. So Sila is off. Sila number nine is off creating the gift basket, which leaves us uh, with Eli. Eli, uh... Now that the announcement has been made, <clears throat> uh, how, I mean, a lot has happened. Uh, is there anything that you would like to do to process that you are sort of, are you on your own this evening? What's, what's I lie up to? Uh, so after seeing Ikemba walk away, they're going to follow Ikemba uh, okay. to check in with Ikemba. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was quite a moment there towards the end. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to search for Akimba, whether I can find Akimba or not. It's up to DJ. Easily found. Not trying to hide. Like, Akimba's yeah. just hanging out, snagging on some cheese that he stored. Because always pocket cheese for Akimba. That's just the rule. Of course. Of course. Akimba, uh, do you, do you have a moment? For you, I always. What's on your mind? Um... I just want to check in with you. I know that um, what you experienced or went through with Bertrand uh, could be uh, quite a, a quick and um, 
big undertaking and I know that you felt a lot of pressure at the moment and I know after big moments like that after I've dealt with them um, decompression is 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 nice and um, sometimes the adrenaline kicks up and then one doesn't know what to do with themselves so I just wanted to check in to see if you were okay if you're on the up and up um, because um, going through things similarly um, sometimes you don't know what you're going to feel like when you on the other side of saving someone in that type of predicament. To start, I appreciate your coming to me. Um, I'm mostly fine. Uh, that Bertrand is all right makes me feel so much better. Like, I can't put into words how much better I feel about things. But I think it's more... Um, I've been in situations where... Uh, people with the gift of bio priest abilities have tried to assist people they loved that didn't need it and did not end well. And it was a tough moment for me mostly because I could tell that one wrong move could have severely injured Bertrand in ways that I don't want to explain, but there was a good chance that the team bringing a gurney to take him out could have taken him without issue. And I didn't want to find myself there. Um, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough weight to carry. And it's, it's awkward sometimes. Uh, I apologize if I put too much pressure on you. I just, there have been moments where you've hesitated in the past and I wanted to let you know that we were all in support uh, of you in that moment. I thought that was a, a good time when I've trained other rescuers and sometimes they, um, they don't trust their capabilities when um, they don't think that they can pull through or have the the steel or metal to to perform and sometimes just knowing that they have support uh they surprise themselves and that was um what i was trying to do if, if i made you feel any more pressure i i apologize you have nothing to apologize for <laughs> i'm here because i'm a bio priest this is to be fair uh Kosa was correct. She said, don't hesitate. Um, I just have recently been reminded of moments where failure could mean death. For instance, uh, it has not uh, missed me that you were in a situation where I could have assisted you. But you gave me permission. And it worked out nicely. It's important to me, for the most part, that people that I attempt to help give me permission, because that's a level of trust that you can't just give. I am in dire need, or I am hurt. Will you use your ability to help me? That is the question, really, when may I is asked. Bertrand was not in that state, and... I cannot tell you how pained I would have been were it my fault that he was not fine. And that's all. I hesitated because no permission was given, but also fear based on memory. I won't talk about my fear much, but it was there, and I didn't want to needlessly hurt someone I care for without permission would have made it even worse. I understand. I understand that you have your own process and seeking permission and, and making sure that that's a, a fundamental part of how you heal others is, um, is important. And I can't 
that's something for you to navigate. I just want to check in to make sure that uh, you came out on the other side of that because sometimes either whether good or bad, um, not everyone comes out of the other side of that positively, if you understand uh, what I mean by that. And since you seem uh, mostly okay, the, that's all I want to check up on. If, if, if that changes, um, uh, just, just let me know. I greatly appreciate that. And yes, I'm, I'm good. And with that, um, how are you? How are you feeling? Oh, um, well, I'm fantastic. I got to see um, Decker and Maria and um, in a small way that was a little respite in, in all of the chaos. So uh, quite happy and all oh, Bertrand's okay. The whole team's okay. And I, I think I'm in, I'm in good standing. Good to hear. And you, you and the team seem to work very well together. Were you together long before? Uh, yes, uh, we were together for a squad for a bit, and um, that's why I learned to do everything I do and why I do well under pressure. Indeed. It was obvious very shortly after we arrived how quickly you were handling things, and your communication with them was just perfectly on point. I'm just well done. I did. I was knocked off my bounce a little bit by seeing them. Maria had to kind of push me in the right direction. I kind of lost myself for a second. But other than that, um, yeah. I well, didn't see it, so I would imagine things are fine. It looked amazing to me. And thank you for, what, for all that you do. Thank you. Uh, well, with that, I wish you a wonderful evening. Um, and like I said, I'm here if something changes uh if you think back on that moment uh and best not to dwell on it too much but take what you can from it I like that thank you uh and then i will leave akimba to what they're gonna do for the evening yeah and uh i like you get back to uh your quarters whatever uh, and you open up the drawer and there's a little surprise that uh, both Maria and Decker have come back also for debriefing with Torch. Uh, so they're there. Sorry, I made that way more like suggestive than I meant to. I just meant they were there to surprise you. I mean, look, I don't know what y'all are gonna get up to, but the point mm -hmm. is uh, that they came back for debriefing and uh, wanted to surprise you. Uh, and they have, uh, you know, they have big smiles as you come in and, and uh, we don't have, certainly don't have to play any of this out, but just, they're very happy to see you. They're very concerned about you. They've already, because they were just called onto the scene, they've already done their pretty short debriefing with the major uh, and and they asked where you were and they just wanted to check in on you and check up on you. I greet them. We yeah. probably just hang out in the general quarters and uh, I can think of something in the meantime. I didn't think they were no, gonna No, that's be okay. Here, I just, so. no, no, no. It was just, uh, just a thing, just that they're there. Yep, they're, that they're there. They're chilling with us in the quarters because I imagine Koza is also there just tinkering. So we're all just chilling. <laughs> yeah. Koza definitely, like everyone left the room and she's like, I could have stayed in the room. I brought all my stuff in. <laughs> and she, she like so scoops up all now. of her tools and like okay. goes over to the sandwich platter and smushes the sandwiches on the one end, drops all her tools on the platter and just takes the platter back <laughs> into her room. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then um, sees Eli like, are we... Are we hanging out? What are we doing? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, if you haven't met them, uh, Maria over here and Decker right there. Sandwich? I, hand, I grab sandwiches and hand them. Yeah. Oh, them. yeah. And, you know, it's been a day. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't have quite the beginning of it that you all did, but they worked hard. They'll take sandwiches. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then she just turns and walks back into the room Incredible. and sits down with everything Incredible. on her lap. Is is she okay? Yeah, that's this is they're great. They're, very, they're brilliant. That that's the process. Yeah, yeah. Trust I mean, the process. Yeah. Oh, oh, she's still. She definitely heard me ask you. I have very good hearing, okay. and then she so just like flicks her to... ears forward and backward. She's very forward. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that's... if I'm off putting. 
Not in the least. I'm sorry that I asked if you were okay when you were still in the room. Meet Maria. Maria is also okay. the hat. This whole, yeah, that's, that was all, that was all uh, Decker. Maria is just sitting there sort of with her arms crossed and like a little smirk about this whole situation. You're good. I didn't read anything weird into that. Oh, great. That's great. I, cause I wasn't anything weird about, and, and at this point Maria just comes forward and like takes Decker and like sort of holds him and just yeah. is like, okay, we're done. It's nice to meet you, Koza. That's great. Uh, oh, are we done? Um, no, we're, we're not done that way. No, sorry. Oh. No, it's okay. Uh, I Do lie. I have to give back the jaws Handle. of life? No. I'll be uh, <laughs> Yes. Thank you. I heard no first. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll make yeah. them good. Uh-huh. Torch can reimburse us for that, right? That was, yes, those uh, are exp- okay, great. Yeah. I'm Enjoy. a line item. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a, I can't think of a better line. I'm a line item and we, we cut. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, so we've got Maria and and Decker hanging out with Eli and Koza. Um, Invicta, you're pretty sure that you heard uh, Silent 919 head off uh, to, to, well, you don't know this, but to make her gift basket. Uh, and, and you were sort of able to just sort of sit by yourself for uh, just a few minutes. And then there's another knock at the door. I just kind of pull the covers over my head. Go away. I haven't seen you in months and I helped you save your friend and you want me to go away and you hear Invictus, your cousin Invictus out in the hallway. And I go open the door and just basically go back under the covers. You know, like when you're like really sad and you sit in bed with the covers over your head and you're pouting? Uh-huh. That is, that is Invicta right now. Uh, Cool. So Invictus walks in and you, you're now at the bed and you've got that. And there's just, you don't hear anything. He doesn't move. Uh, there's just silence and you're, you know, in the dark under the whatever. And then you hear the lights in your quarters activate and you can see, you know, that it's brighter on the other side of your blanket. And then you hear Invictus approach your bed and, you, and he says to you, are you injured? No. Well, not physically. Ah, mm-hmm. Are you... <clears throat> and he sort of pauses for a minute and thinks, and then he says, now nah, I don't have any more questions, and he grabs the blanket and just tears it off of you. I'm sorry, what? Well, I mean, I did maybe wanted to make sure I wasn't going to hurt you, but, like, I haven't seen you in forever, and you've been through a lot, and uh, history tells us that you moping under the covers is just going to take a long time to make things better. You ripped my blanket off. I did. I did do that. I did. Yes. Yes, I did. And what did I do to you when we were kids when you did that? Um, That is humiliating and nothing that should be brought up in public or in private, but... Point taken, and he sort of throws, he does not recover you, but he like throws the blanket at you. Tosses, I should say, he tosses the blanket at you. I just like sit there within my lap, I'm like, fine. <laughs> fine, fine, you're gonna, with the blanket and the... No, just gonna pull it off again. Excellent, you know me well, even after all this time. What's going on? You're What's my matter? You cousin. saved your friend, he's okay. Yeah, he's okay, but I'm not. All right. And he pulls up a, a chair uh, to your bedside and sits down and just, you know, elbows on the arms of the chair. God. What's going on? Are you are you trying to do this like we were in university? I am trying to get you to not hide under a blanket for the next like couple hours that I have here at this very fancy facility, by the way, I have to tell you. At least make yourself useful for us a drink. <sighs> and he turns around and goes to the little, you know, I don't know, hotel mini fridge, I don't know, thing that you have there in your quarters. And he, he, pulls, he pulls out uh, rocks glasses and some ice and pours a couple of drinks, comes back. Yes, you are correct. This is the much better option. Now, how have you been? How do you know that Hatharayan, who, by the way, well done, and what the ever-living, whatever, 
landed you here? Well, do you have 12 weeks and three hours for me to tell you? <laughs> no, I got like, and he, he checks uh, his data pads timepiece. He's like, I got like two hours before my transport. So go. Long, long story short, we got recruited by Torch. They asked us to look into something stealing water. Turns out it was some kind of alien. Our friend Bertrand, the Hoffrain, uh, is the engineer of the ship that we found, well, you found wreckage of. Right. right. And uh, we had been looking into something strange and something in the water shot his ship down. And Invictus sort of stops you at this point and goes, cool, hang on one second. Am I going to regret asking for details about any of this? No. I mean, like, you've just said a lot of, like, alarming words. Like, we we know a lot. Of, like, we treat with, like, a ton of different species in the galaxy. But, like, some kind of alien suggests something we haven't seen before. That feels like a lot. Also, like, I don't know if any of this, is any of this classified? Should I be worried? Nobody's told me, so. Uh, fair enough, fair game. Okay. Oh, and, and a whole beach of people saw the beam come out of the water. Is a fair point. That was not subtle. I saw it and I wasn't even on duty yet. Yeah. All right, well, this is all very exciting. And like, congrats, proud of you, cuz. Like, this is awesome. Uh, next question though. Okay, let's jump to the present. What's going on? You. I'm your bedside manner cousin needs a lot of work. Is terrible. Yes. That is why I'm not a medic. I like literally cut things open to get at the inside of them to save the people inside. So pretend that you are the escape pod and I'm cutting through whatever's going on and we're gonna get, just tell me what's happening. It's a good thing I like you. Yeah, Shakes well that's been true for many decades. <laughs> She boops him on the nose before she starts ah, talking. <laughs> Look, Sila made a comment. Hang on, is Sila that Montagani woman? Yes. Sila nine one nine. He says, Admiral Sila nine one nine. I heard about her. What are you doing, Vice Admiral? I don't know. She might be listening. I've just I've heard. I've been here like twenty minutes and I've heard things. Well, if she is, she can hear this. I don't care. But she self-promoted and wanted us to celebrate. Yeah. And then gave me a sandwich and made a comment about it's from your disposable. Is it okay despite being from a disposable Android? Which is not how I feel about her or wasn't how I felt about her. I, okay, cool. Not cool. None of that's cool. Is there more? How have you been working together long? Was that out of the blue? We've been working together long. And when I tried to get us to go find Bertrand first, instead of, I don't know if you saw the thing that the, that Coast is working on the, I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's something she made that, that she uses in her work. But half of it was on the ship. She had the other half, but I was worried about Bartrand. And they both took that as if I don't care about inorganic people, which is the furthest thing from the truth. Right, of course and, it is. Well, apparently it's not because that comment really hurt me. Okay, so. As established, my bedside manner is hot trash. So like, not gonna give you any advice on like what to say to her or like how to feel about this. Cause ah, that, that, that sucks. And after everything you all have been through today, I'm sorry that you're all hurting about this. That sucks. Um, I think though, knowing you, you have always worked really hard to forge your own path and you've done pretty well these are gestures broadly and that's awesome but you've put up with a lot over the years i mean i remember 
school. I remember university. And I, it's none of my business. It is certainly not my wheelhouse, but I just, I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you lonely, Invicta. You put up a lot of walls and a lot of them are there for really good reasons. But I don't think, and I, what do I know? I don't know these people. I just got here. I saw y'all work together as a team. That was pretty impressive. And you work for Torch, so that tells me something. And my guess is that with the emotions and the stress of the last couple of days, you all are just spouting nonsense out your mouth without thinking it all through. And I bet that once you've all gotten some time, gotten some sleep, gotten a little distance from, and and he, you know, this whole time he's been sort of jovial and smiling and a little jokey about it, but there is a sort of moment that the facade cracks a little bit and he says, gotten through everything that you had to get through today, that you'll realize that you're all teammates. I don't know if you're all friends, but you're all teammates. You're all good enough. The torch wanted you all. Feels like that's worth something. And, you know, I, I'm your big cousin. I know why you have those walls and I, I champion those walls and those walls are really important because they're sometimes are shitty people. My two cents, my two credits, whatever. I bet that's not the case here. Now, this, and he holds up his glass, is empty. And this, and he grabs your paw and raises up your glass, is not. So, we gonna drink? Sure, and I'll order us food. Ah, uh, magic words. I mean, she did sit outside the door and apologize, but you know how I am, cousin. I know, and look, I'm not telling you to change. Why? You take care of yourself, you process things the way you need to. Good to know that she said uh, that she was sorry though, because I sure did go out on a limb making assumptions about these people that I do not know, but that sort of seems to agree with me. Uh, so good, you know, uh, sit with it tonight and tomorrow, accept the apology and I don't know, go learn about these mysterious aliens. That feels like a good distraction. I mean, I might, depending on how long you can stay, I might do that before sleeping. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and he looks at his watch. I still got like hour and a half before my transport. Oh, you can take a transport back tomorrow. You don't have to go tonight. Uh-huh. And he just pulls out his data pad and like taps out a little like, I'm going to be late and sends off to... Whoever um, is whoever is waiting for Invictus. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody. Oh no, I just smile and I go, oh, that's right. He always hates it when you're late for dinner. <laughs> Look, I'll tell him it's you. It's fine. Oh, all right, but if it's going to be a hassle, don't let me get you. No! Oh home. my God. Oh my God. Take yes for an answer. I'm fine. And the bed's big enough where I can get a or get you a room uh yeah he sort of looks around and is like i don't it's you know this place is very nice i'll take whatever okay <laughs> and uh i will hit the data pad order us an exorbitant yeah. dinner and uh <laughs> more alcohol great great and you'll have a lovely evening catching up with your cousin. No more, no more talk of, of the difficulties of the last days, just fun reminiscing, uh, drinking, and good times. Is there anything briefly else that we should know about this evening in particular? Yes, please, Eli. Uh, of course, so it's for the people. Um, Eli and crew, Gave you well, the their crew, they're going to PG cuddle for the night. That's it. Yes, I love that. I love that. Take what y'all with what something? will chat. Yeah. Uh, Is there something on the sci-fi TV? I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably just like, like wildlife. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> Eli, yes. Okay, great. Eli and crew watch Space David Attenborough nature documentaries. Uh, and at the end, uh, 
it there's a there's someone akin to bob ross but not like bob ross <laughs> at the for you know yeah space bob ross some, some painting yeah yeah space there bob ross painting happy space trees obviously <laughs> excellent i love that i love <laughs> i love that uh all right so we fade out on each of these scenes uh, Invicta and Invictus having a night. Uh, Silent Nine One Nine, very uh, you know, very meticulously putting together gift basket. Uh, and <laughs> Eli and crew watching Space David Attenborough and Space Bob Ross, uh, and uh, Koza fixing up Tiwi. And it can be uh, no, Koza just geez. goes to sleep for once. Oh, Koza just goes to sleep for once. Yeah, she piles everything in the corner. Now that the Mark mission's the over, she actually just goes to bed. She's exhausted and yes. injured. Oh, sure. I love that. All right. Someone, and said, Akemba, she, someone oh, what? said happy little asteroids and also Rob Boss, which is just like. <laughs> yes. Love that. yes to both of those. <laughs> yes to all that. I love it. I love it. All right. And as uh, evening fades tonight and um, processing whatever form it takes fades to sleep, we shall fade to our break. Oh, that was a transition right there. Uh, we are, it was not, don't, please don't praise me for it because it wasn't that good and it'll just, uh, we're going to take a short little break. We are going to uh, take bios and get water and you should all do the same. Don't go anywhere. We will be back very shortly. We're going to try and aim for as close to five minutes as we can. We'll be back and see what the next few days bring for our crew. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we will see you shortly. Bye. Goodbye. For
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. We appreciate it. Hope you got what you needed on that break. We are back for the second half of episode two. Uh, so you all have gotten back to Torch HQ. Um, you have had your decompression evenings, whatever that looked like for you. You've gotten some sleep. And, and in fact, actually, um, well, I suppose we should, we should see the next day. Uh, so the next day, you know, you all have been given by Major Rafia as much time as you need. So if, if that was a night, great. If that's, you know, a few days that you all need to decompress, that is fine. Um, so you all can tell me when each of you feels you are ready to, to move to the next step to alert Major Rafia that you're ready for the briefing, uh, whatever briefing she has in store for you. And if there's things that you feel like you want to resolve before then, then we can certainly do that. Yeah, <laughs> with the hand, yes. Yes, ma'am. So I'd like to make sure that before Invicta is able to leave her room for the day, not as able to leave her room, like not in a control freaky kind of way, but in a like, in the moment that you are leaving your room, you step outside and like on one of those little like easels, there's a yes. big giant red heart card that says sorry on the front of it. And it's like, she's taken like little brown twigs and nonsense that she's found all over the place. So it's supposed to look like it's, it's very precise because it's yeah. Sila, but it's also like on the inside, it says, I apologize for the amygdala hijack. When stress makes you feel strong, anger, aggression, or fear, the fight or flight response is activated. It often Incredible. results in a sudden illogical and irrational overreaction to the situation. You may even regret your reaction later. I regret my reaction. I should have just said you hurt my feelings. I'm sorry, please. And it's like a space. And then she like wrote in a different kind of like style, more like a signature that says, forgive me. Oh. And so then she like signs it like, love Vice Admiral Silent 919. And underneath it, like at the base, there is a giant gift basket that has like little wheels of cheese and then like little legally distinct baby bells. <laughs> and then there's little chocolates and there's also like little tiny mini bottles of wine and like Ooh. pretzels. So yes, space pretzels. But also, fave. also right next to it, there's chocolate covered pretzel sticks and there's vanilla and there's chocolate next oh. to a multicolored bouquet of flowers. And I think Invicta knows exactly why that would be the thing. So I hope that's what she sees when she comes out of the room. She does, and then she steps around it because she's like, can I have coffee first? And then, and then behind her comes Invictus, who like has been up already and knew it was there and didn't move it, uh, but also has coffee waiting for you because uh, both he knows and also him too. Uh, so he's standing sort of around the corner and he comes around the corner, hands you a coffee mug and then walks behind you, picks up the gift basket, comes back over and like offers it to you in your other free hand. And I just look at him and I'm like, do you see the coffee? It's not empty. Uh, he... Uh, he looks a little disheveled, like he's clearly been awake longer than you, but like not much. Uh, and so, you know, his fur is sort of sported at every angle. And so he sort of <clears throat> takes a sip of his, co his coffee and then goes, mm -hmm. I can wait. You were always a morning person. I hate you for that. I just fake it better than you, he says. Go in my room, just do something with it. I want to eat it, but okay. And he walks into your room and puts it on like, the desk. I'm like, you can eat. We're, we're feline people. Not those parts. Oh, wait, sorry. I've got to open. Not those parts, he says from inside your room. <laughs> I mean, you can eat the cheese. It won't go well for us or you, really. But Campbell likes cheese. See? She included gifts for other people, he says from inside your room. I just keep, I'm just standing there in the hallway, like fully dressed, ready to go with my coffee in one hand. Like, here we go. I have can't you, even have, get out of my room. Before I call on Silent Night, have you had any of it? Like, have you taken any sips of your coffee? 
like three sips of this okay, giant mug sure. of coffee. It's a giant mug. I just want to make sure you've got something going on. All right. So at that moment, uh, as as you hear, uh, you hear the distinctive, like that type of cellophane crinkle that is someone trying not to crinkle the cellophane. You hear that uh, as Silent 919 comes around the corner, I assume. I should check in with you before making assumptions. No, as something happens. Silent 919, what's going on? Invicta has gone back into her room to enjoy her coffee with said cousin, correct? I'm still in the hallway. He's in the room and trying to sneakily go in the basket, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, so he's in the room, but Invicta's still out in the hall, just holding her coffee, sort of bracing herself for the day. So as Invicta goes to turn back around, <laughs> see two little braids tuck under and lift the vent over to the side. <laughs> and then down through the vent, comes a cardboard cutout of Vice Admiral Sila 919 with a big sign in the middle that says, press here with the button. I absolutely refuse. I, I, I feel like I have used this trope too many times, but I'm gonna use it one more time. Invictus comes out, sees it and goes, oh, hell no, and pushes the button. <laughs> Invicta, I'm sorry. Please forgive me because I hurt your feelings and you threw a sandwich at my head. But it's okay because it was only bread. So please forgive me. If you would like to hear the second verse, please press the button on my ear. Invictus looks at you and just slowly outstretches his paw. You're gonna do it anyway. Just, I just like go. I like walk back in my room <laughs> with my uh, coffee, and I'm like, I need all of you so much right now. Uh, so, so you do not immediately hear verse two. Uh, you shut the door, and there's silence out in the hall for a minute, and then you hear shuffling around, uh, and you hear from clearly from a ways down the hallway. Uh, you hear Invictus just sort of yell back to you, like, "They're good people. I promise." Come out when you're ready. Okay, see you soon. Bye. And then you hear from right outside your door, verse two startup. If you didn't get the point of my initial message, here's my only simple message. Just and you should forgive me, but you don't have to because I respect your boundaries and I'm not gonna pressure you. But I really hope that you would understand that I would really like to just be your friend. And if you wanna be my friend, then say so after this song ends. And then down pops Sila like upside down. Oh, and the, and the hallway's empty. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There's just nobody there. Your cardboard cutout is standing like facing right up, like leaned on Invicta's door, and nobody is around. Silent 919. Guess that's a no. <laughs> she just like raises back up and shifts the little piece back into place and heads back to her quarters through the vent. Oh, man. And I'm sure I hear this. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, you, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, so everyone has, has off, has of course given you space to, to take all the time you need, although it seems like your cousin is, has some kind of feelings about it. Um, Ooh, it's a good thing I like him, but I might ask uh -huh. my wedding gift back. <laughs> uh, he knows, he, he's, he's, he's ready. Um, great, delightful. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't want to, uh, move on until we're ready, but also are we ready? ready as will ever be and uh, in, Invicta just like she comes out with a travel mug <laughs> sure with Torch's sure. logo on it okay and just grumbles as she goes down to this meeting or wherever we're supposed to meet up at yeah so uh once you once everyone is ready uh Major Rafia will will send you all excuse me the she'll gather her team or whatever and and let you all know where to to meet for the briefing slash debriefing i guess um anything else uh koza kemba i lie all right so 
once you've had a chance to, uh, you know, get your morning started, whatever that looks like for each of you, uh, and you sort of check in with yourself and um, goodness, by good luck or providence, you all decide at approximately the same time that you're ready for this meeting. Um, how convenient. So you, how convenient, the magic of tabletop role playing. So you uh, you all let Major Rafia know and she lets you know, yeah, you know, we'll, uh, I'll need a few hours to gather heads of departments and everything uh, and then to meet in in the, in fact, in the conference room that you all met, uh, or that five, that four of you met uh, Major Rafia in that very first time, back when she was Captain Rafia, uh, in sort of a very large, sort of very formal uh, conference room. And in it is an enormous uh, uh, round table that you all know, uh, the center of which is a is a holopad that can display, you know, whatever for the meeting. And uh, when you all arrive for this meeting, there are already, the room is, is not packed, but full. There are a lot of people here. Um, there are a lot of folks sort of standing uh, along the perimeter of the room uh, with data pads out, you know, uh, murmuring to each other, uh, clearly sort of, uh, you know, functionaries who are taking notes or working on things or whatever. And then seated around the table is a somewhat smaller collection of, um, of people uh, all of whom obviously have some level of authority in Torch. Uh, you just sort of sort of can can smell the like hierarchy on them, not in a bad way, but just like in a very like they are self assured that they are there for a reason and they are going to execute that that reason. Um, and Major Rafia sees you and and ushers all of you in uh, and gestures for you to take seats. And uh, she once everyone is settled, uh, sort of begins by saying, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you all for meeting um, at such short notice. Everyone here has been very busy for the last 12 to 24 to 24 hours. And I appreciate all of your hard work. And then she sort of zeroes in, <clears throat> excuse me, on the five of you and says, but none so much as the five of you. You all have not been in the employ of Torch for very long, some a matter of months, and some genuinely a matter of days. And yet the five of you have done more to bring threats to light for this organization in that time than many lifelong members and agents of Torch. One of your number was severely injured. We are doing everything we can to take care of him. And we believe he will make a, she pauses for a minute, full, full recovery, but it may are take you lying? time. She almost smiles, Koza, and she turns to you and she says, no, I am prevaricate, prevaricating so that it sounds nicer. Bertrand is in, critical condition, but he is stable and will recover. To what extent we do not, do not yet know, but know that were it not for your actions, he would be in much, in much worse state. She I sort just of checks glance in. over to Akimba. He sees and just... Uh, she sort of watches the exchange and then nods and continues and says, um, the five of you have completed your contracts with Torch as they, as they were originally written. If it is your desire, and she looks to each of you in turn, your service may be ended. You have fulfilled the duties that you were asked to fulfill when you were first, when you were first, when you were first brought on. You then completed a subsequent mission for some of you and a contracted mission, a contracted mission for one of you. And you have been through much. It is not, it is not the position of Torch to force agents to extend themselves beyond what they feel they are, beyond what they feel they are capable of. So before the debriefing and briefing continues, if any of you would like to be discharged with full honors from Torch, you may do so. Let us know. And she sort of pauses. Koza full, like, turns around in her chair to stare everyone down to see what they do. Of course. Akemba stands up. 
Okay. And just looks at him just, I don't know about anyone here, but I've been having a great time, sir. So I've been for staying around. And then he just sits back down. That's um, very good. <laughs> yeah, Major Rafia sort of nods at you and says, um, had I blood pressure, it likely would have would have risen. <laughs> no worries. I just figured there was enough tension in the room. We should probably lighten things up a bit. There are a few chuckles, mostly from like functionaries around the perimeter of the room. Uh, Major Rafia sort of looks to see if anyone else wants to have a little moment uh, and seems satisfied that none of you nice. have run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kosa leads in and goes, door. Vice Admiral says I can say, so I'm going to stay. There is an indescribable look upon the Mansagene who is leading this meeting space. It goes blank, but but there is such a, a tension. There is such a like forced, tightly held nature to Major Rafia's neutrality right now that it feels like at any moment, the porcelain of this current faceplate might crack. And she just says, good, 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 <clears throat> good. Glad to hear that, Koza. The little nod to Sila like that. I think, I think the paperwork went through. <laughs> oh, it did. I pushed it through. I actually hacked into the system to make sure that it would be authorized and notarized and sent through. There are a lot of responses to uh, Silent Night when I'd say that she hacked into Torch's system uh, and very quickly Major Rafia just sort of uh, raises what, a like single hand. like a tar? Oza eats that like nod and agreement and just goes, you never, you never admit it. <laughs> uh, so Major Rafia sort of the, frozen. She's the vice admiral. She can, she's in position to admit. I am authorized. I have a high security clearance now. I gave it to myself. Oh, I have also all cleared all of you to at least fourth level. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you say that, everyone in the room just sort of, like all of the Torch staff sort of pot, like there is sudden silence and a few people sort of cock their heads and you hear not nearly quietly enough for the sudden silence that has descended on this room. You hear like one of the people on the side of the room whisper not quietly to the person next to them, aren't clearance levels lettered at Torch? Just not kidding. Anymore. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Uh, finally, Major Avia, who's been standing with one hand raised, attempting to regain control of her meeting and just sort of, yeah, at this point, some of you, like those of you with more uh, sensitive hearing definitely hear like, gears like not grinding but like pressured against each other uh and there's a sort of those of you who can hear it there's just a sort of of release as major rafia says thank you and the room sort of snaps back uh to her attention and she says um <clears throat> titles pay rates and other benefits are of course and she's distinctly not zeroing in on silent 919 for this Myself. of course up for negotiations uh, but i am pleased 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 to hear that all of you will be staying on as there is much work yet to be done and she brings up uh a before she does she sort of uh, she looks to the five of you and she says i just want you to know that during this briefing we, by necessity, will be uh, showing images, images of the crash site of the Wistful Wish, as well as the escape pod pod. Is that going to be an issue for anyone? She sort of looks, nods, and says, excellent. And she taps something on the table next to her, and up comes a uh, 3D representation of the crash site of the Wish, not the escape pod, but the Wish itself. Um, <clears throat> And she begins talking and she tells, she says, uh, she tells you, obviously, as you can see, the wish was completely destroyed. Uh, she sort of grabs uh, or gestures towards the uh, image and she 
zooms in on a few places, starting at what you recognize as sort of the aft, the back part of the wish, because uh, you recognize a few things from the cargo hold back there and the engines back there. Uh, and she sort of zooms in on a few different points. And you very quickly realize that she's showing you all uh, the places where there are scorch marks from the weapon, whatever it was that hit the wish. Uh, and she said, we've been able to uh, collect some residue, residue and analyze as best we can these scorch patterns. Um, strangely, they are not, the residue is not a weaponized substance that we recognize. Uh, and she sort of gestures uh, and let's see, this person, uh, a Musalian, uh, a Musalian person stands and Major Rafia introduces them as Agent Retz. Uh, and Agent Retz is uh, one of the chief intel intelligence officers here at Torch. And he takes over, uh, sorry, they take over and tell you a little bit about uh, what they found in the scorch marks. It doesn't take very long because they don't really understand these weapon patterns. They are strange, uh, heretofore unseen residues and scorch patterns. And uh, Major Athea takes the meeting back and tells you all, uh, oh, sorry, uh, no, not true, Agent Retz. They also say that as far as they can tell, checking the wishes um, uh, black box, essentially, sci-fi black box, um, that there's no evidence, or at least the ship could could uh, find no evidence of any sort of target lock uh, on the wish itself. And so Agent Retz tells you that they have personally overseen a lot of the analysis of the wish's black box. And as far as they can tell, uh, the wish was not the target of the attack. The wish was an incredibly unfortunately was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and got caught in crossfire, but they don't believe that it was the target of this attack. Have you analyzed trajectories to see what the ideal target would have been then? Agent Reds has been, they've been very stone-faced uh, because they are a head of intelligence and they have to whatever, uh, but they crack a smile at this and they say, what an excellent segue and they begin to tell you about how they did just that they analyzed the trajectory as best they could <clears throat> excuse me of the beam that you all saw fired from that strange hapalock squid weapon in the ocean and they tell you about how they uh, followed this trajectory and it extended to the edge of planetary sensor arrays uh, range and continued so there's a sort of dark spot where planetary sensors weren't able to continue tracking it and then where they were able to pick up uh, sensor readings from nearby stations and planets and other whatever. And so they used what information they had to sort of triangulate as best they could where, because eventually the beam stopped. Much further out, there was no evidence of the beam. So it hit something and stopped. And they have identified that it was just a couple thousand kilometers outside of the range of planetary sensors. So not very far on a galactic scale, um, not very far away at all. For all intents and purposes, whatever it was, was sitting there just out of eyesight. Um, and Major Athea takes the meeting back and tells you about how, uh, since it is a dark spot, they don't know what was there, but they have an idea that something was there, not only because the beam stopped, but because not long after uh, the wish crash landed, there were... Uh, uh, sensor pings of little bits of debris falling into the Vatoan atmosphere. And scout teams have been dispatched to collect them, to find out what it is, what this debris is, but presumably it's from whatever was hit by this weapon. And early reports from the scouts, according to Major Rafia, indicate that it's the same strange metallic structure that you all reported and that in fact, uh, Maria and Decker and their crew were able to bring back bits of from the wish. It's that same strange metal that was used to make the vessel that was on the beach that you, that you all first went out to investigate. So whatever it was, was made by the same people, was part of the same fleet or mission or whatever. Uh, so Major Rafia sort of stops and looks around and says, okay, this has been a lot, a lot. Um, 
questions before we continue. I'm going to direct all of my questions at Rhett's because I think they know what's up more than you do. I'm sorry, Major. Okay, so um, we're dealing with a weapon off of a terrestrial ship that was able to like not have enough decay to still hit its trajectory despite hitting the wistful wish. And it destroyed whatever evidence it had of itself. Like, do we expect to actually recover any usable scraps? Or can we just assume that this thing has covered its tracks properly and move forward from there? Agent Retz sort of is watching you and listening to you and sort of doesn't know what to do for a minute. And they look over at the major and the major just sort of uh, uh, takes a moment and stares at Agent Retz and then just nods. And Retz turns back to you, uh, Koza and says, uh, oh, no, absolutely not. They absolutely have covered their tracks. Whatever that weapon was, was more powerful than uh, anything planetary we've seen in some time. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the, the good news, though, is that what we think we figured out is, um, now, we're taking a lot of this on conjecture, uh, and as much data as we have, and to be totally honest with you, I'm not completely comfortable with all of the leaps of logic, no offense, Major. Mm. And then they sort of they look at you and they're like- that. Uh, and but the major says uh, the major sort of says I, I happen to agree with you, Agent Retz. Uh, and Retz sort of nods, and they say um, uh, anyway. It, it does seem likely by the data, with a few leaps of of faith, uh, yeah. that whatever those ships were, and whatever presumably Hapalock weapon was used. First of all, they are obviously at odds. So we have a sort of. Uh, uh, three-way conflicts. There's us, and then there's the Hapalox, and then there's whatever that was. But they do seem to be distinct groups. Um, and recovering even small bits, small fragments of the metal is more information than we have ever had about whatever whoever those people are. Uh, so their tracks are probably well covered, but... Um, and Retz looks back at the Major, and the Major says, well, but that is where, hopefully, the five of you will come in. Uh, and as if she knew it was coming, without looking, or without moving her head at all, Major says, Koza. Okay, one, um, you need to raise my clearance, or I'll do it myself when the meeting's done. Uh, two. Um, I think Retz interrupts you and says, I have after five minutes in the room with you all, I have literally zero doubt that all of this is well within both of your capabilities. But like, could we m maybe take the hacking of the torch security systems to like a private conversation? Okay. I'm not a protocol droid. Uh, uh no, no. Anyway, back to me. Why aren't we more worried about the fact that these two extremely technologically advanced and antagonistic forces haven't reached out to us yet to get us on their side? Um, so there has been, in one of the chairs, there has been a, um, there's been just a placard in front of an empty chair at the table. The placard was blank, um, but, but that's not surprising because for many of you, as you sat down at your seats, your placards uh, uh, lit up with your names. Um, and at this point, the doors open in like what is almost like a dramatic entrance, but like kind of not because the doors are automatic and like it's torch. Um, and Yachtur actually from Kusili walks in. Uh, and you'll recall that Yachtur uh, is a Hyenol who uh, specializes in predatory marine uh, fauna and they come in and they say oh we are like for sure we are very worried about that and comes and takes their place uh, at the table and their uh, placard lights up with their name and their title at Kusili I'm done now for now um and the major nods, uh, turns to Yachtur and says, glad you could join us. Uh, and Yachtur just sort of, <laughs> um, so the, uh, 
Major continues and says, so at this point, you two, uh, and she gestures at Koza and, uh, and Retz, uh, have laid out the situation quite clearly. We don't know much, and that is a problem. Problem. We need more information. These two groups don't seem, don't seem particularly forthcoming with communications or parlay. We tried that once. So it falls to us to find out, to find out whatever we can. Now, we have two groups antagonistic towards each other, uh, antagonistic towards us only insofar as we seem to have gotten in the way of whatever their plans, their plans are, but we need to know more. We have a contact and she gestures to Yachtur who like grumbles and stands and says, uh, old friend of mine, xenobiologist, lives uh, somewhere. Uh, he might know a bit about the squids, uh, was into sort of crypto, xeno, biology, marine life, whatever. Uh, you'd go ask him, see if he's got anything, find out more. And the major nods um, and says, so if you would like to head up the department that will be investigating and gaining as much intel as possible on the Hapalock threat, that is one option, and your first stop would be um, Yachtur's contact, xenobiological contact. Alternatively, uh, and she gestures now to, yes, to another, uh, man, there are hyenals everywhere, uh, to another hyenal, uh, this hyenal man, and she introduced his uh, Dr. Niero, and, uh, and Dr. Niero is the uh, chief engineer here at Torch. Uh, and Dr. Nieto is able to tell you all a little bit more about, <laughs> I looked away and then looked up and there you were, Koza. Um, tells you a little bit more about uh, what they've been working on with the Mysterious Ones tech. Um, and basically in a lot of technical speak that Koza really appreciates and the rest of you understand enough of to get the gist, but I, I imagine not quite so this. Um, tells you that largely, in fact, thanks to uh, the work of Maria and Decker and their crew, they managed to actually salvage, salvage, yes, 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 you all understand. Uh, they managed to actually salvage a, a, a surprising amount of the vessel that you all had put aboard the Wistful Wish for transport back. Um, and so they have basically taken bits from that vessel, they took the little sleepy disc, the sleepy chip uh, that was on Ikemba. Uh, they've asked for that and are studying that. Basically anything that has ever sent a signal in y'all's presence, they have analyzed and they still have no idea really where things are coming from other than probably that ship that got exploded. Um, but they have found one possible comms relay for these people that appears to be still intact, that is out further, much further from Batoa. And so after, uh, after the doctors uh, report to you, the major says, so the other option uh, would be that we can assign teams to uh, interface with Yachtur's uh, contact and get that information. And you all can chase down the comm signals of uh, these other people. Um, we do not believe that this comms relay that we've identified is going to be an endpoint, but we hope that from there you'll be able to continue to make contact points and hopefully follow them back to something with more information. I would like to go with the good doctor's team. Um, and and uh, Invicta, uh, Dr. Nieto sort of looks over to you and he has been this whole time until he started talking, he was in his notebooks or his data pad because it's the future uh, and was, you know, clearly was still working, like was still doing analysis and whatever the whole meeting. So he didn't really clock you all very much as you came in. And even as he was speaking, he was mostly addressing either Koza or the major uh, because the major is his boss and because Koza is... Um, loudly curious. Uh, 
And when you say that, Invicta, he finally turns and sees you and just his jaw just drops open. And in fact, his tongue sort of like sticks a little bit out to the side. He is completely shocked to see you uh, and says, uh, Invicta? Yeah, every day, all day. And he looks down at your placard as if to sort of verify what his eyes and ears have seen one more time. And he says, oh, uh, it's, it's nice to see you. It's been a while since the classroom. You seem surprised to see me here. No, uh, in fact, honestly, not at all. Uh, just surprised I didn't know sooner. It's a pleasure to see you, Invicta. Uh, perhaps we can we can catch up. Uh, I'm very, very happy to see you here. I'm glad to see you too. And I just like give the biggest shit eating grin to Kosa. I, I was top in your class. I'm glad you remember me. Uh, he nods and says, who could forget? Give him a smile, as much as a high and old can smile. Yeah, without being like really terrifying. Yeah, uh, I love it. So uh, the major sort of interrupts uh, gently and says, I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't do my due diligence, due diligence and realize the connection. Um, am I to infer that where one goes, the rest follow? She says, looking to the other four of you. Um, before we move forward, there is something uh -huh. that we do need to discuss. This is an extension of our previous contract. No, right? This is a new uh, contract. The major looks a little bit at a loss because she signs the things, but like she doesn't write them. Uh, so she sort of looks around, but none of like the bureaucrats were invited to this meeting. So she says, um, I believe that is the case. Yes, yes. This is a new contract and we're going to need to renegotiate to ensure that there's hazard pay as we've nearly lost our lives. Our friend nearly lost his life. So we're going to need to make sure there's hazard pay and a, an increase to all of our bottom line. So let's make that happen before we move forward. We'd love to take on the mission, but we need paper first. Uh, if you will. There is like a single soft clap from one of the people at the perimeter that is like very quickly like hidden away. Um, the major uh, looks at, you know, uh, neutral, but not tense again. And when you're done, uh, she nods and she says, of course, uh, my apologies if any of the previous terms were, uh, and she stops and she thinks for a minute. And she says, if any of the remuneration clauses from your previous contract were unacceptable or subpar, subpar, we will, of course, do everything to make sure that you are taken care of in terms of your remuneration clauses. That would be fantastic. I would also like it in writing. Out of respect to my rank being higher than yours, that I will be referred to henceforth as Vice Admiral Sila 919. I'd like to have your sign off on that before we go risk our lives for you again. Victor turns on and looks at her. <laughs> at least her rank was actually earned. Well, and not self-assigned and all stolen. I'm say, oh, well, all I'm going to say is good gracious, Sila's audacious. <laughs> The major turns to everyone that is not the five of you in the room and says, thank you, dismissed. <laughs> that laugh. Uh, and everyone very quickly sort of gets up uh, and heads out. Uh, the, the good doctor uh, sort of nods to you as if, as if to, you know, we'll, we'll catch up. Uh, I'm just like, I'm of, going with the doctor. Y'all can stay. <laughs> uh, oh, I, the major wants to continue to uh, discuss things with the five of you if you don't mind sticking around and Victor uh but but he does sort of wave to you uh Yachtor sort of nods to y'all and is like uh exciting uh, thanks and Kosa does the like we'll talk to agent Reds 
Yeah, and uh, Rex like about that. turns like, to you to be like, "We'll talk," and and is like, "Yeah, okay, great." Um, and they head out too. Um, so the major says, um, "Excellent." Now that we have some, she looks around space. Um, I want to first be very clear. I am incredibly grateful to the five of you. All of torches, all of torches. That said, we are an organization that reaches across the galaxy as best we can. We've been around, we've been around for some time and not that there isn't always room for change, for change and improvement, but there are some things such as a hierarchy that keeps things running, keeps things running as they need to, that must be respected. And this time she does and you, Silent Eye, there's a thing that you can do, that Monsagene do occasionally, occasionally, um, when they want to particularly focus on something, on an interaction, where it isn't just that you turn and your sensors are focusing on that person or that whatever, but also there is a sort of stillness in everything else, right? Like power is rerouted to the sensors in a way that like, you know, visual uh, visual stuff is sharper, uh, auditory cues are clearer, uh, there may be a record being made of the whole thing. And it's, it's, it is in fact, generally when done, uh, particularly between Monsagene, it's a respectful thing. It is a, I am giving my full energy to the conversation that we are having. And she does this to you, Silent 919. And she says, you, have done so much for this organization. You deserve an officer's rank. We don't technically have a fleet in a way that would provide for an admiral, for an admiral. In fact, she doesn't, in fact, she doesn't glitch. I'm so used to glitching for Rafia, but in this moment when this is happening, she doesn't um, for an admiral. We can absolutely take as much time as you feel you need to discuss an appropriate rank. I will assume that you have taken the liberty of studying the command structure at Torch so you know how things are laid out. And I will personally make sure that you, and quite frankly, any of the rest of you who so desire, Attain off an officer's rank, commensurate with your experience, your service, and what I have no doubt will be future endeavors. And she focuses back on you one more time, Zyla 919. She says, and if Admiral is a deal breaker, then we can discuss what that would entail, what it would require of you and of Torch. And perhaps in time, we will establish that rank and you will fill it. Does this seem reasonable? And there is a, uh, again, a sort of very, very soft little hiss as Rafia sort of lets go, allows energy to return to the rest of her systems. I understand your feelings and I understand your structure. And I am grateful that you have conveyed to me your feelings on the situation. I respect you and your authority and all of the hard work that you put in here at Torch. That being said, <clears throat> and as Sila, it's blowing air into her figure. She's actually uh -huh. changing her outfit. Yes. Yes, and of course she is. And you slowly 
see her and it's something that looks a bit like a set of coveralls. It's very crisp. It's very put together. Uh huh. It's belted. A pair of shiny shoes covers come out. And on her shoulders. Oh no. You see the rank uh -huh. of vice admiral. <laughs> and on her collars, uh -huh. you see the rank of vice admiral. And on her name tag, it says Vice Admiral Sila 919. And she channels all of the power oh, no. that she possesses. <laughs> and she looks at Major Rafia. Mm -hmm. And she says, There once was a great philosopher on Yarth 25. So bad. Her name was Lanethia Leakes. And she said, and I quote, I said what I said. You all need a new ship. You want to go build a new ship? The yeah. major says to the U5. Uh, I, I just want to be a chaplain if that was uh, a thing that I can do. I don't want. Yeah, done. Sure. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a pretty eyeliner. What was that, Koza? I'm going to be head engineer. I feel like the doctor would have something to say about that, but sure, you could work alongside him. The major, you've never seen the major like this. Like, she, she I think yeah. you, I mean, I'd not, I, me, storyteller Eugenio, am saying nothing about your rank, but I am telling you that the major is definitely giving off some 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 major defeated vibes uh, in this <laughs> moment. <laughs> uh, so she's like, "Yeah, sh sure. Do you, let's go. Let's go get you a new ship, huh?" And uh, and Victor has just been basically standing at attention because she believes in military rank and file. Sure. And she just looks over to Rafia. And stands at attention is like, I will accept whatever rank I've actually earned. Ooh, what you spell? Why are you trying to pick a fight? Why don't you stop talking to me? You are not Admiral Rafia. I was speaking to the Admiral. Oh, I'm not She's Admiral. a major. Pay There's attention. only one Admiral here. You know what? <laughs> no, there isn't. You're a Vice Admiral. No. <laughs> Do you know what? The admiral in the title. So, Invicta was already not feeling great about all of this. She salutes and it's like, fine, you all do what you want to do. And uh, she goes back to her quarters and she like snaps a salute and leaves. And the major sort of looks around and says, right, I'll, I'll let engineering know that maybe we'll be by for the ship tomorrow. Two questions that, for you, major. Sorry? Two questions for you. Oh, yes, please. First. What military rank would I have earned? As uh, far as officers are concerned. Uh, she, she looks both grateful to be asked and also just like, I don't know. And she says, uh, I will check with command and let you know. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, my second Th question. Th oh, right. There were two. The ship. Uh, you have a ship prepared for us. Uh, no, in fact. Um, oh. In fact, uh, we have arranged uh, for you all to take a trip down to the engineering bay to customize one for your use. Your uh, really? needs are particular, and we thought perhaps it would be a good opportunity to provide you with the necessary tools. The camera just looks at Colson just like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes! Sorry. <laughs> Probably. And he just looks at me and feels like, I have no idea what she's thinking, but I feel like this is going to be fantastic. It sounds like uh, perfection. We should probably should have let Invicta stay for this. Oh, I wish I would have asked this question sooner. Sorry. Uh, the uh, major is like doing budget calculations in her head. So because now I'm a chaplain, do I have to start work? uh now no 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 don't oh i lie no no uh thank you uh but no we'll you'll this is your assignment 
the major is very quickly unraveling. Okay. And I think without a word, the mayor just, go, the, the mayor, the major says, um, thank you. We'll send contracts along shortly. And just sort of very sort of thousand yard stare Go ahead, goes ahead and walks out of the conference room. Uh, and that is where we will uh, wrap for this evening. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, so we have some information about where we may be going soon. We're getting a new ship, how very exciting. Uh, and you know, we have some interpersonal things to clear up, but that is all for future episodes. Thank you all so much for coming in and hanging out with us. We super appreciate it. Uh, for episode two, season three of Into the Motherlands. Uh, let's go around again, chaos. You all decide who goes when, uh, but let's go around so that all of these wonderful people can let you know what they're up to, where else you can see them between now and next Wednesday when we'll be back for episode three. Who would like to start? Hi, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Christina Hi. Ariel and I yeah, play are. Vice Admiral Sila 919 and you're Monsignor Bio Priest. I am also the host of Star Wars The Higher Public Show on StarWars.com. So if you ever want to catch up on those, read all the books and find out my show is very spoiler heavy, but you can go watch it and it's exciting. And I talk about stuff and I do my own sense. It's really nice. Um, other than that, just pay attention to my internet because that's where I post the stuff because that's where all my friends hang out and the people that care if I do something cool and like to share in the joy. So those people are great. Oh, um, I do want to take like 2.5 seconds to say that we all inhabit the same internet and everybody is legitimately doing the best that they can and it takes a lot to put out content despite your own self-doubt and your own bad feelings and we're all just trying to do the best that we can with the gifts that we do and we can support each other and if you don't have anything supportive to say then you don't have to be hateful you can just move on with your life instead of being hurtful for absolutely no reason and then i think it's a time that you just if you don't enjoy something like find something that you do and talk about that and spread the love of that. But we don't, there's no point and life is too short. There's enough going on in the world without people being hateful to one another. So take that into the world, be good to each other, make good choices and just take some time to be kind this week. Love you guys. And you can follow me and all that stuff that you know to do, but most of all, just be kind. Oh, amazing. Uh I'll follow that because seconded. That was so incredibly well said. Um, I'm Abria Iyengar. You can follow me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Uh, I stream all over the place. Uh, tomorrow is the finale of Xandria Unlimited, my limited run series on Critical Role. Um, check that out at 7 p.m. on Critical Role's channel. Uh, tomorrow, earlier in the day, at a time that I know I have written down but don't necessarily remember, you can actually catch uh, me and Amy Dallin talking on D&D Beyond, uh, just sort of giving a, ca a campaign wrap-up from a DM's perspective in advance of the finale, so you can catch that on D&D Beyond's Twitch channel. Next Wednesday is the premiere of The Seven, the new series uh, series on Dimension 20, where I play Antiope Jones, one of the seven maidens, uh, so you can catch that at uh, it goes live at 4 p.m., but obviously don't watch it until this is done over on dropout.tv. Um, and on Fridays, you can catch me over on Failed Safe on Pixel Circus's channel at 7 p.m. Uh, I've got a couple uh, charity games coming up next week and some big projects to announce. So keep an eye on my socials for all of that. Uh, cool. So, uh, hello, my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Crits Everywhere. Uh, you can catch me on Twitch uh, playing Match of the Gathering. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I am also in three other shows, which Let's Get Wild Mount with Critical Bard and Opera Geek, who's in the chat, and a bunch of other folks. I'm in Second Star to the Right, which is a TTRPG that takes place in Neverland, which is really fun. Um, and then I'm also in Fae Forge Academy, a wonderful, beautiful podcast about going to school in the Fae Wilds. And it's wonderful, um, like a magical school. Uh, also, uh, I was recently on Ellie of the Veil's stream. We were playing Commander and we had an all black pod and it was wonderful, felt great. Uh, hopefully it's a thing we continue. Uh, I think we're gonna try and call it Barbershop, Mag Barbershop Magic, which is just 
just wonderful. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's me. Am I mean, some hello? We got two left. Who wants to go? I'm I think DJ word. should go. Okay, right, cool. Go. I'll do it. Hi, I'm DJ Knight. I play video games here on the internet as well. You can find me at all the places at DJ Knight. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming to hang out with us tonight. We have this lovely show tomorrow. I'm going to be on a lovely show uh, with our glorious and fantastical host, uh, Black Dice Society. It's going to be yeah. awesome. I play uh, Desmond, a human ranger like and throw. It's just it's a it's a good time, and I actually don't have to try to use an accent over there. So it just kind of is nicer on my throat sometimes because reasons. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, thirty, by the way, just to uh, hop on that because I was, I fully agree with everything Christina said, and I feel like we all should kind of live that life of being the change we want to see on the internet. So rather than being the worst, and see, when we see the worst, just kind of cover that with some love, because reasons. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, I guess I got to go last. Hey, I'm Tanya. <laughs> uh, like DJ said, tomorrow find us on Black Guy Society. I am Fen. Your Drow dump here. High enough or drow. Oh my god, I'm tired. Drow dump here. Blood hunter with a little bit of beast in her. Um, Sunday, still not back yet for rivals, but Dungeon D Rags is happening. And also, uh, well, I'll let Eugenio say that because Eugenio is doing a cool thing on Sunday. I could not do oh, yeah. the podcast. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. Game that's all I can. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you can still watch Game Changer. It's... What game changer? Go do it. Like you can watch it like, on BET on demand. Thank you. Wait. That's Go huge. Do you never stop promoing that. <laughs> never. There's, well, there's a command. Maybe I'll watch it again. So for those of us who, I mean, not us, I'm talking about people in the audience. For those who don't know what the game changer us. is, what is what is what is game changer? I don't know. There's a command right there. You can read it. It's a I documentary. Mean, oh, so, so the the. Watch Game Changer, a documentary about our own Tanya Depend, who revolutionizes the industry by breaking down barriers and amplifying the voices of marginalized people. Online at BET, right there. The link, it's in the chat. You should click it, and you should watch it. Thanks. I had a moment where I was like, is DJ going to read that link out loud? You know I was going to read that link out loud. <laughs> you knew it. You knew it. I love it. I love it. Yes, that. Anything else, Tanya? No, I'm good. All right. And I have been Eugenio. Uh, I'm Dean Jazzy Hens. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. You can follow me on Twitter and here on Twitch at DM Jazzy Hens. Uh, what do I have coming up tomorrow? Uh, I will be back on my channel, uh, making our way through Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, we are midway-ish through ME2. Uh, so come hang out at 2 Eastern if you want to hang out with that. Uh, and then this weekend, uh, I do have stuff going on that I've forgotten about until today. Uh, so on Saturday, uh, I am very honored to be on a couple of panels for Pod Jam, uh, a, a little podcast online convention uh, that the Behold Her Studios and the Venture Maidens are putting on. Uh, so at one o'clock Eastern, or I think it's one o'clock Eastern on Saturday, uh, I'm in the first panel of the day talking about actual play 101, what it's like uh, to do an actual play uh, TTRPG podcast. And then right after that, I am moderating a pod, uh, panel called Podcast Nitty Gritty. If you wanna talk about equipment and software and stuff like that, just real basic level stuff, but the, the things that no one else tells you about, we're gonna talk about that. So come hang out uh, for Pod Jam this weekend. It's gonna be super great. It'll be on the Venture Maidens uh, Twitch channel. And then on Sunday uh, at four Eastern, one Pacific, uh, I'm going to be on the Gamer podcast, uh, Gamer Gaming Magazine podcast, uh, which I'm super excited about. Uh, Urban Bohemian and I, uh, Brian from Rivals of Waterdeep, we're going to be on together uh, being interviewed about uh, our, our uh, characters' relationship on Rivals on the upcoming season of us co-DMing. Uh, and it's going to be a ton of fun. So that's on Twitch TV slash gaming mag with the Y because we're gay. Uh, so, come hang <laughs> so come hang out uh, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, that's all on my Twitters. So yeah, that's oh. my stuff this week. But no. hey, every, there's like numbers whatever but there's 700 1700 people here if you all go and vote oh, for yeah. us to be nominated for the oh, top yes. ttrpg game that would be awesome it's only gonna take you a couple minutes and you've supported us i hope that you'll keep supporting us we're really excited about this and we put a lot of heart and soul into this game we've had a successful kickstarter also we just love each other and like each other and put good vibes into the world and I hope that you will support us in that and take a couple minutes. I don't know if the link is right there, but you guys go and vote for us 
Did they? Here, I'll pop it in. There, oh, nope, that's a thumbs up. I'm not popping it in chat, but do that. Go check it out. It's on our Twitter, on the Motherland's Twitter. All right, we have held you all long enough. Thank you all so much. Do all of those things. It has been a pleasure. We will see you next week, Wednesday evening, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Was that midnight GMT? Uh, thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate you. We will see you then. And in the meantime, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And as always, happy gaming, y'all. Bye.